what was that third one that you said? Something about toxic masculinity, Beth. Can you just say that one again? That it's not a thing. I feel like, do you want me to elaborate? Yeah, explain. What do you mean by okay, that? I feel like I feel like masculinity is a thing, kind of like femininity is a thing. If you're mm -hmm. toxic, you're a toxic person. I don't feel like saying a masculine man is toxic because of his masculinity is a thing. I feel like men are, men can be toxic just like women can be toxic. I think controversial, but I think a lot of feminists are highly toxic just in their thought of the anti-man, uh, anti-man kind of rhetoric surrounding feminists, this, you know, these days. So I feel like people are toxic regardless of their masculinity. Mm. What about this notion? I think the thing that gets brought up a lot when the flag of toxic masculinity gets flown is this idea of man, male vulnerability. Right. You know, we had a conversation about this on our show this past Saturday. There seems to be this ever increasing pressure on men to open up their feelings and make sure they're crying on their woman's shoulder and going to therapy and that sort of thing. I mean, and any sort of advice to the contrary is toxic masculinity. What What, what is what is all the ladies on the panel's thought about vulnerability in men? Is it necessary? Is it a turn off to you or or? What does that mean to you? I think that there's a point where um, if I'm dating somebody, I want them to be vulnerable with me, but um, there's like a point where it's too much. When does it become too much? Where's that line? Um, hmm, like Can you an example, like where you got like the ick off a guy or something like that. Cause it's like, <laughs> ah, that guy's a little too, too much of a pussy. Yeah. He was just kind of relying on me for his emotions. I guess. Um, and I don't know. I, that's just, it, it's a turn off as soon as that happens. I feel like I don't want to be responsible for somebody else's emotions and their day to day life and their mood. If I do something and they don't like it and it just makes them, I, I don't know. What would they do? Very Can reactive, like, like a reactive yeah. guy, I guess. Well, okay. okay. So he's a little bit more like, um, more emotional, control. can't regulate yeah. his emotions. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But can you give us an example of where that's positive for you? You said, because you want a guy to be vulnerable to a certain point. So like, what does that look like before it gets to that sort of critical mass? Mm, I mean, it could go in a good way. Um, I want somebody, like, I want to know that somebody loves me and I want them like to share their emotions with me. But as soon as they start relying on me for their day-to-day -day emotions that they're having is when it, I feel like it goes too far. Well, I was going to say, too, or if they're like constantly the whole day, they have to give you a play by play of their entire day and they expect you to respond. So I don't want that. I don't care what they're doing. 24. I don't care what they're eating. I don't care. I just want to live my life. I want them to have their own life because it's super unattractive for men to just like be like, hey, you know, I had this for lunch. I don't care. Exactly. I, I'm I'm laughing because I <laughs> because I used to do that in my 20s and it was probably the stupidest shit that I ever. You know, it's embarrassing for me to raise my hand and be like, "Hey, you know, I used to do that gay shit." Um, but yeah, you want to like you want to say less, guys. Like you have two ears and a mouth. Use them in that ratio for fuck's sakes, and you know, only speak <laughs> when you actually have something to say that's actually interesting to a chick that's captivating that demonstrates your resourcefulness that your social network is is cool but like what you had for lunch or what you did at work today they don't want to hear it they really and don't. what's interesting about that point that Chrissy brings up is that there's also conventional wisdom or there's a lot of this advice parroted by women saying i want to know what you're doing all the time i want to know that you care i want to right. know that you're thinking about me i want reassurance but then as soon as that happens they get the ugh. Yeah. Like I don't need to, they, they say they want that, but they actually thrive on the mystery in the unknown of what you're up to. Maybe you're out with another girl. I don't know where you are. Maybe he's doing this. Oh, I better text him. Right. As opposed to, you know, so that's what's so interesting because you hear this a lot from, from women that say, no, I, I love a guy that's texting me and me only all the time. Mm -hmm. And then it happens and they're like, holy Until shit. Until it gets annoying sucks. and they're turned off. Yeah. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.